Today's episode is brought to you by Ben's Awful Audio. He assured me that he had checked everything and then failed to notice that he was recording in stereo for two hours straight. And I don't care about this book enough to want to redo it again. So, really sorry. Ben's audio sounds really echoey and shitty. I blame Ben. He blames the audio drivers. You be the judge. So did you see that article that everybody was talking about, about Nepo babies? No. Yeah, I forget what magazine or whatever. If you Google Nepo baby, I'm sure Claim their Nepo. parentage is overblown. Yeah, yeah. It's all these people who were like, got careers in acting because of nepotism. I don't know why I thought of that when we started recording. That is weird that you would think about that. Because we're talking about spy family, right? 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 <laughs> yeah. Right, Ben? We're we talking... debated talking about Spy Family as, like, because we thought we might need a palate cleanser <laughs> or we thought it might <laughs> give people the wrong impression of the podcast if we just recorded three very negative episodes in a row. And then we decided to But then you changed it. your mind. Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're just going ahead with it. So it's Words About Books. I'm Ben, he's Nate, and we're talking about How to, how kill, to kill Your, your Family. family. By Bella Mackey. By Bella Mackey. Oh. Oh, man. This is voted on by our patrons. Thank you for supporting oh, the show. Yeah. If you want to get in on this and you want to vote and support our show and get extra content and even bonus episodes sometimes, most of that is in the $2 tier. For $2 a month, you're getting all kinds of Words About Books content delivered Right to your delicate, delicious ears. I feel like we should apologize to the patrons, though, because in that poll, we also gave them the option of Thrymskvila, and we covered that first and anyway. Hey, we never so... said we wouldn't, okay? <laughs> we never said we wouldn't, <laughs> but, but we do honor the decisions they make. I mean, it wasn't, yes. it wasn't what do you not want us to read. It's what do you want us to read. And we're covering True. How to Kill Your Family, which I... Okay, you know what, Ben? Let me, let me lay some groundwork for you. So, lay that on me. So I was looking for potential books to put up for vote. Uh, this was back in December, so that it would be... Oh, please God, tell me you didn't go to Goodreads. Uh, well, <laughs> funny, funny story there ben um i i went to goodreads uh, oh no <laughs> but but the but the premise ben the premise sounds here let me, let me just bring it up so i can read it to you because it actually it it caught my eye as like oh that might be kind of funny and and interesting the blurb that that sold me on it was um and in retrospect it's it God, when I heard this in the audiobook, I did cringe a little. But I've killed several people, some brutally, others calmly. And yet I currently languish in jail for a murder I did not commit. And when I think about what I actually did, I, I feel somewhat sad that nobody will ever know about the complex operation I undertook. Blah, 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 blah. But basically, scrolling down to the next paragraph, it talks about her absentee millionaire father who rejected her mother's pleas for help as she was dying. So main character vows revenge. She's going to kill every single member of her family, which she does. And it's it's played off as like a, a dark comedy type of thing. And then there's this mystery of, oh, wow, why are you in jail for a murder you didn't commit? Ooh. So the premise sounds really, really awesome, right? So I was actually excited for this book. And, well, we've, we already talked about how we're, we're not wanting to just record downer episodes, but <laughs> if you like this so, book, <laughs> maybe we, now's we may, the time to stop listening. <laughs> we may have to bust out the uh words about books grading rubric for this yes, one because absolutely 
as as rare as it is for a book to get five stars from either of us, I think it's equally as rare for a book to get one star from either of us. And I, I need to check something out real quick. If you're new to the podcast or if you just never knew this, uh, Nate and I are on Goodreads and, and we review everything we read on Goodreads. And there's, there's a much more straightforward, like, if you want to read, like, would you want to read one of these books review on our um, on our Goodreads? Than what we usually do on the podcast. So I just want to see what I gave. Uh, okay, Ready Player One got a one star. Yes. That got a one star from me. Um, I wasn't sure about that. Let me see. Let me see. I'm pretty sure Ready Player Two also got one star. I'd be that, shocked. That got one star. Yeah. Um, um, what's another book I hated? Um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, but I think you gave that like Sis- three or two. Yeah, so Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. I, I absolutely hated this book. It was torture to read. I gave this three stars. So nothing, I, I just nothing to, say to see because, here was three stars. Yeah, I, I just want to say, I both have to really hate the book and think there is just absolutely nothing You gave House of anyone. Leaves three stars and I gave it two. Yeah, I have to think there is nothing of value to literally anyone for me to give a book one star. I gave this book one star. I also and... gave this book one star. Yeah. And I was anticipating, because I read this. This was the first book I read this year, Ben. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I was like, you know what? I want to get a jump on this. This looks awesome. Let's do it. And boy, was that a mistake. Boy, was that a mistake. So, so I had finished this almost a full month ago. And so I was just waiting for you to get into it because I needed, I needed to have, I needed to know, am I crazy or was it really that bad? So I think there's a chance that I may not hate it quite as strongly as you do. Well, I'm and a very that... passionate man, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I just, I, I think, Ben, that this is only the third book that we have both give it a one star rating okay i wanted to do a little about the author please do ben okay i don't know a ton about the author the author is bella mackie but what i do know is that bella mackie is a i think staff writer for the for vogue uk okay and her father was the editor-in-chief of the guardian her husband is the host of some BBC radio morning show that I would have no cause to ever listen to. <laughs> and I bring that up just to point out she's somewhat well connected. Well, Ben, I also have to bring up, uh, and I was not able to verify this one way or the other. So if anyone knows, please let me know. I I also have to bring up a wild speculation. Yes, wild speculation (laughs) that her grandfather was a baron. I don't even know what that means. Nathaniel, our ancestors fought a war, so we never had to care what these people (laughs) called themselves again. I do often think of that. (laughs) Somebody mentions getting an OBE, and I had to look up what an OBE is, and it's Officer of the British Empire, and I was like, oh, y'all think you still have one of those? Wait, was that in this book? Yeah, oh yeah, she God. mentions the, the, the one guy's <laughs> trying to buy an OBE, and it is still a, a thing they give out, Officer of the British Empire, and it's like, well, uh, you're, I don't, you're I don't know, maybe like 70, <laughs> 70, 80 years ago, maybe, was the last time that... Maybe they count right, Scotland and Wales, Empire. and that's why... <laughs> <laughs> They've also got uh, uh, the Falklands. Cornwall. Yeah. They... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've got several islands throughout the the world some of ireland yeah there you go they've got a foothold in ireland <laughs> god oh boy this book did not do much to endear me to, to the british or or, <laughs> or vice versa to be quite frank so bella Mackey has written two other books both non-fiction or like semi-fiction semi-autobiographical books about jogging in relation to mental health mm-hmm yeah. So this, I think, is her fiction debut. 
I read, this is another wild speculation, I read it was a two-book deal, but Ooh. I read that in, like, a comment ah, of an article, I so I was not. like, it could be, I mean, it could be, if the, it certainly ends like it's a two-book thing, at least, because it ends on a totally unresolved cliffhanger, spoilers, I guess. We're going to spoil the whole book, but yeah. Just to get some stuff out of the way up front. Yeah, the, the those other two weird. books were nonfiction. Yeah, so this is a fiction debut. This is a this is a debut novel, and I I want to say you can tell. Mm-hmm. I don't think Bella Mackey did a lot of fiction training. Looked at a lot of she... fiction. You know how Goodreads we talked about this before. The star ratings are skewed up. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Because people don't tend to finish books they don't like, right. or or even seek out them. books they don't like. That takes a lot yeah. more time. Yeah, you're by choosing a book, you're immensely biased towards liking it. So yeah. it's kind of alarming when you see that like all of her books are less than four star average. I guess her fir- yeah. her first book looks like four star average, and then the combination of that book and her second book is a three point six. This book is 3.64. Like, I'm not going to put a lot of stock in Goodreads, but usually if the stars are low, that's a warning sign. If they're high, whatever. They're, they're skewed recurring high. recurring criticism, the recurring criticism across all of her work is this is, like, incredibly repetitive and padded. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going to get into that. I think this is somebody who is used to writing articles in Vogue and maybe not long-form material. We'll get into it. Let's just go ahead and, and start jumping into the story. I think that's all I want to say. I wanted to get her her background as a somewhat privileged, relative to most debut authors. Yeah. Person. That might be relevant because when we dive into this book, Ben. Uh, who knows? Might be relevant. Who knows? Right? Who knows? I, I'll, I'll say right now, the main character is somebody who is like on a war against people partly because she views them as having undeserved privilege. And this is a person who got this book published, I would guess, almost entirely through connections. Huh. Where have I heard about this phenomenon before? Let me... Yes, there's Nepo. Oh, Nepo. But look at that. That's already in my Google search for some reason. Can you imagine? Like I'm picturing Nepo babies, and it's it's like it's like the Muppet babies, right? But, <laughs> but they're all insufferable. It's, like, <laughs> it's it's Elon Musk and uh, Bella Maggie. <laughs> Bella Maggie, yeah, she's she's not Elon Musk. I mean, she's not that bad. All right, so our main character is Bella. I mean, Grace. Grace, I forgot her last name. Grace is in she's jail. Not Grace Artemis. She's Bernard, she's Grace, uh, according to this blurb. <laughs> yeah, her her biological nice father is Artemis. They're yes. they're the wealthiest people on the planet. Grace is in jail for a murder she didn't commit. So she's she's writing in her journal, I guess, about all the murders she did be committing, yo, because she wants someone to know someday of all the brilliant murders that she got away with. She's a very brilliant person. So I've been told repeatedly by her. <laughs> this is a this is a book written from Grace's very charming, eloquent and dare I say intelligent perspective. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord. Ah, she's got a she's got a cellmate who's 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 dumb and stupid possibly ugly and she just intrudes in on everything just put a pin in that put a pin her dumb roommate who everyone cellmate sorry not roommate her dumb cellmate who everyone can outsmart and can't do anything right just put a pin in that so grace is gonna take us on a trip and the book will oscillate between the past and the present when she's in jail so to let you know she gets away with all these murders, so there's not going to be any suspense, right? 
You know she doesn't get caught for these murders. But there is that one dangling bit of, well, what crime is she in jail for that she didn't do? There is, there is right. some intrigue there. She also skips around a lot in her life. I'm just going to kind of do it chronologically, and I'm going to get it out of the way quickly. Are you opposed to that at all? Or do you want to give the authentic experience of reading this book no, and we'll record no, a three-hour no. session and just leave it all in without editing? No. <laughs> so, I will skip the chapters where she's just in prison bullshitting. What? You don't want to hear about how the system is designed to make women feel empowered, but, like, not really? Ha ha ha. You're just in prison, but some person put down a mandate that you have to have mandatory an hour class of empowerment, so let's all go around. And and how she's got a, a counselor who's a big ol' idiot. You don't like those chapters? Those chapters where it's, like, it's a commentary on the prison system? Question mark? Okay, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. Let's, let's talk about even what is this book and what's the message? I don't know. Uh, all right. So uh, I. <sighs> this is a tough one it's because because the, there's the book is us. <laughs> it's ostensibly about everything the blurb said it was about, but what it's really about the the majority of the book is Grace traveling through a classist British society and, and making... I don't... You know, she I brings, didn't get the man... She brings up man-hating stuff. enough, and the ending leads me to believe that is a point that she wanted in there. I, I certainly think she is working an angle of Grace being a feminist, but... <laughs> We're going to talk. I hope that wasn't the angle because she failed if that's what she wanted to do. I don't think that's, I don't think Grace's defining trait is that she's a feminist. I think that, I'm going to tell you right now, Grace is an insufferable character. Grace is an unlikable character. That does not necessarily mean that it's a bad book. No. You can have a character that is intentionally unlikable. Now, I can't tell exactly. if was, this is intentional. I was about to ask you, is this an intentionally unlikable character, or is this someone she actually thinks that we're going to like and relate to? I can't tell, and I'll talk about that more as we get to the as we get through all of those things. There are things that initially in, in like the first half of the book, I thought this was satire. Because Grace just is constantly cutting down everyone and everything in her mind. And it is written in first person perspective. So you hear all of Grace's thoughts. She is constantly going on and on about everything she doesn't like. She has a formula where she sort of looks at a person's physical characteristics, their outward presentation, like the way they speak, the way they dress. And then she makes sweeping judgments about what kind of person they are, what their character is. She had work done. What their flaws are. She had things injected into her lips. That one was one that was two or three times. And then don't ever trust people who are fake redheads. Yeah, there's a lot of these. And, And any one of these things in isolation, not any one of them, but like, it could be funny. Because I think what she's trying to do here is, is like make a generalization and then the audience, you're supposed to think, oh, I know somebody exactly like that. Isn't that funny? How she just like called it. That is so true. But the problem is she does it with absolutely everybody and everything. And this is why I'm going to push mean back a little and bit. And petty and just, like it's not, it's it's not incredibly, ha-ha funny. It's just like no. you're you're kind of a jerk. But this is why I'm pushing back a little bit on the feminism, like on the man-hating feminism thing. I don't think Grace hates men because she is as a, she attacks women as often as she attacks men. I, I she think att- <laughs> that she doesn't like men, but then, I don't think she likes people. Yeah, okay, that's fair. I think that <laughs> she I think that she is definitely anti-men though. And then the the women hating stuff is like I don't know if that was on purpose or what. 
it. I don't know. I don't know. Grace only likes Grace. Yeah. And and, and one Grace other person will get woman. into that. It's it's gross. Anyway. Grace is a woman. Yeah. So the flaws of men, her attitudes towards men, she does look down on men. But she also looks down on other women. She looks down on poor people. She looks down on rich people. She doesn't like people who don't care about the environment, but she doesn't like people who care about the environment too much. She doesn't like people who hate immigrants, but she also thinks that the Persian guy talking to her on the plane is probably an asshole because he's a rich Persian guy. It just goes on and on and on. She hates everyone. Everything. It And it's almost so over the top that it has to be satire. But then you get to the middle point and she starts giving Grace vulnerabilities and sensitivities. And even those are weird and suck. But it makes me wonder, like, oh, no, wait. Am I supposed to, if not like Grace, at least care what happens to Mission her? Mission failed if that's, the, if that's the intent. Yeah, Grace is infuriating to inhabit. Her head is a mess. See, the closer I am to someone, the stronger I get. I'll be able to go into your brain even if you're wide awake. My brain's not a nice place to be. However much men over 50 hit the gym, there's always a slight thickening around the gut. A nice little reminder every time they try to look down at their dicks that they are losing their youth. This is none of that Instagram bollocks about strong, not skinny, which really just hides an eating disorder in an obsessive exercise regimen. A Russian nesting doll of neuroses. And I can't tell, is it Bella Mackey, who I know from her previous books about, you know, jogging for mental health. I know she's dealt with mental health issues. I know she's been to therapy. She's seen psychiatrists. So she has some experience with how you get better. But is this, this isn't a healthy mind. Like, Grace is not well. She's too smart. For the psychiatrist at the prison, Ben. Right. And so I know Bella Mackey doesn't think she's too smart for a psychiatrist because she's seen psychiatrists. So there's one part where Bella Mackey is not like Grace. I kind of wondered the whole time she I was going to this. did give Grace a running thing. She did. I, think, I wonder I maybe you... if Grace is the dark side. Is Grace Bella Mackey's like worst impulses put into a human being you know what i would i would do i would either not write that or i would have a point <laughs> to writing that and i don't understand the purpose of this book it hinges a lot if there's a second book it has the potential to change everything it wouldn't make this a a better book but it could potentially take the saga of grace from a one star to a two star <laughs> if, if she gets around from to some point that's the main thing is the the murders the plot of the book i want to say it's maybe and this is being very generous 10 percent of the page time yeah that's being pretty generous and the, and the other 90 percent is just remarks that have nothing to do with anything I'll read you an example right now. This was my favorite because I, I actually started fast forwarding. I, I whisper synced this. I listened to the audiobook and I had the Kindle version because I couldn't tell which was going to be the less annoying way to consume this uh, material. So this is a, a person that Grace is going to be murdering. And this is how Grace thinks about going about murdering this person. Bryony Artemis has one of those faces you've seen before. I don't mean that she looks like a girl you know, she absolutely doesn't, but she's got a look that social media has made ubiquitous. Pillowy lips, a bundle of glossy wavy hair, a body encased in athleisure wear, far too thin, but that the owner would go out of their way to say was strong. Emphasizing their biceps, their quote unquote booty. The kind of skinny that some women profess not to think about as if it's not all they think about. Women like Bryony look startlingly beautiful in photos, but a bit, quote-unquote, uncanny valley in real life. I love that description. 
The roboticist Masahiro Mori coined it in 1970 to describe our revulsion towards robots or computer-generated images that look almost like human beings, but not quite. The Bryonies of the world are flawless. Their features plumped and smooth. It works in photos. She's writing this in down real in life, her journal. It's deadening. <laughs> it makes for in prison. She's putting this in yes, sock. Yes, she's writing this it in makes prison. For, it makes me long for the. I'm not done. This is one paragraph. <laughs> It makes me long for the days of wonky breast implants and terrible facelifts, when at least the insecurities that made women mutilate themselves were visible in their appearance. You could laugh at the bride of Wildenstein, I don't know what that means, or be sad that she did it to herself. This tribe can't show you anything with their faces, nothing that would drive you to feel empathy, pity, or even derision. And then the next paragraph, is about what she's wearing. And then the next paragraph is about how Grace looks at her Instagram. And then the next paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on and on. It's like there was it she she wrote her spot. whole novel. She wrote her whole novel, and she was like, okay, it took 20 hours to write. It'll probably take 20 hours to read. And it's five pages. And, and it, it's, it, it's yeah, I was going to say like 10 pages. And she's like, <laughs> Shit. oh, I better pad. I got a pad. <laughs> What's, what is, uh, <laughs> what is Masahiro Mori up to? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you still with us, this is the Words About Books treatment. Because we haven't even really started the summary. We're half an hour in to our recording. This is how it is to we, read the book. We try, as, as part of our podcasting philosophy, we try to make each episode have the same sort of vibe <laughs> as the book. And I had initially, when I started reading this, I, I was like, she commits the murders, right? The first two murders happen relatively quickly. And I was like, oh, a fun angle for the podcast episode might be like Detective Ben from the old Agatha Christie episode comes back and he's going to he's gonna solve the murders. And you were like, hey, you still want to do that? And I was like, no, because I think it gives you an inaccurate... <laughs> Uh, idea that this book was in some way fun. There's not even enough to hang your hat on there. Your pork pie hat. And I, I know what she's saying about us. Like, like if, if Grace were to listen to this podcast, she'd be like, oh, two middle-aged white men with a podcast. What horrible uh, penis deficiencies do they have? <laughs> it's just like... So real quick, her mom was French... She moved across the channel. She wanted to be a model. Didn't work out, but she met Grace's dad, who was how much older? Like 30 years older or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like 20 years older. Significantly older than she was. They had a fling. She got pregnant. For six weeks. Yeah. Decided to keep the child on the vain hope that he would divorce his wife, who he was also having a kid with. That was Briny. Is that her name? Briny, yeah. Yeah, then her mom doesn't make it as a model because she kept the kid. And dad did not, in fact, divorce his wife to get with a nobody that he had a fling with. And Well, let's be clear. Because this is Grace's whole motive for the book, right? And the dad told the mom, I will have nothing to do with this kid. Get an, have an yeah, abortion. Get an abortion. And she was and, like, no, you're going to, we're going to live in the house together with you someday. <laughs> I, I guess I'm going to step on your toes here a little bit because I'm not saying that what the dad did is good no. or moral by any stretch of the imagination. Personally, if I was going to have a kid, I'd want to be involved in his life. I'd, I'd want to you know, make sure I contributed financially. I think that's the right thing to do. But this guy said, I'm not going to have anything to do with the kid get an abortion. She didn't get an abortion. So he should still have some financial responsibility. I think that's only fair. He doesn't pay her anything, but she also doesn't ask for anything and she never takes him to court. She just wants him to come see the kid. 
and he's not like she, going she to. just never gets over this romance and instead of you know getting a pater- like filing suit to get a paternity test and get child support and uh, she doesn't and she just works a series of dead-end jobs eventually gets sick and dies he gets sick and dies pretty quickly she kept she catches the cancer and then dies like right away well i think the implication was that she had cancer for months or years and just never sought treatment yeah but it came in like two weeks hey you've been diagnosed with cancer those aches and pains that was the cancer bye and she dies and grace is like i will avenge you mom you stupid fucking idiot Sometimes I hate my mom for thinking about liking my dad at all. This piece of well, shit. Well, that's the thing. She even acknowledges, like, well, she's like, sometimes I hate my mom for, like, not being able to recover from this in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I mean, your dad is a predator. Yeah. But your mom could have done things she differently. She had a lot I, I just, of options available to her. I don't want nope. to sound like I am. Yeah, I'm not going to blame not taking the, victim. the mom's plight seriously. Right. Yeah, she is a victim, but we are talking about the response being like angry or taking somebody to court. Those are all, I think, acceptable outcomes, and I, I would support her in in taking those measures. But now we're talking about killing everyone, everyone. in this man's immediate family. Yes. Not just the man, not just the people who support the man, but also people who actively dislike the man, who have cut ties with him. Yeah. You're already on a bad foot, and that's again where I think, like, Bella Mackey must... She can't expect us to sympathize with that, right? Again, if if she wanted to have us sympathize, <laughs> he probably should have had a direct role in her dying. Not this weird indirect role. I mean, here's the thing! Right? She reaches out to him one more time and is like, I'm not going to make it. Grace is only 12. Please take her in. I'm begging you. She's got no one else, even though she does have someone else who takes her in. Actually, two people who take her in, but whatever. Yeah. And he responds, I told you I wasn't going to have anything to do with this. I'm not even sure it's mine, you know, because you never took me to court. I'm going to give you 3,000 of my fun bucks, a.k.a. pounds. Goodbye. He gave her money when she didn't ask. I'm not saying that makes him a stand-up guy, but it makes him even less unsympathetic. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't write her a letter like, go fuck yourself. I, I'm evicting you from that hospital because I am I own it through this back channel. You're going to die alone on the street. He's giving her money. Yeah, it's like if Bob Cratchit just murdered Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> And then everyone related to Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah. Because Tiny Tim had a limp. <laughs> I, I do, like I said, I, I got to emphasize again, I do not want to minimalize how difficult it would be for a, a French immigrant to Britain to take a powerful scion of London to court. I understand the, the roadblocks there, but she didn't try she wasn't interested in it. No. What she was interested in was f- trying to guilt this guy into being in her child's life when that was never going to happen. No. You can't make him do that. You can make him pay, I think. In America, you could. I don't know what the <laughs> laws in Britain are because she also um, commits sex crimes later on. Which, I, they would be sex crimes in America. I don't know if they're sex crimes in, in Britain. But that also makes Grace pretty unsympathetic. And if you don't know what I'm referencing, I'm talking about when she catfished the 17-year-old. Oh, okay. And he, I was like, yeah. what are you referencing? Because she does a lot of horrible stuff. Again, because I see things from her perspective, she's the worst person in this entire story. Bar none. She knowingly, like, this this 17-year-old, she pretends to be in love with him, and he sends her, like, nude pictures, which she keeps. Yeah. To blackmail That's a crime. That's a lot of crimes. That's several crimes. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay, because he's a, he's a man. Because cause he's a little shit. <laughs> That's how she, yeah. she rationalizes it. She, she's like, I don't know why men think women want dick pics. And I was like, well, first off, 17, I wouldn't really say a man. And, and <laughs> yeah. second, 
let's not pot call kettle black, okay? You you did murder a guy in a sex club. And you also used said 17-year-old to murder a woman. <laughs> and yeah. and then you blackmailed that 17-year-old with said child pornography. Yeah. I don't like I said, I don't know if that's child pornography in Britain, but I hope so. if it's not, I'm gonna need them I'm gonna need them to be like five percent less smug the next time they talk to me. <laughs> Grace actually doesn't have a horrible life. She's taken in by someone at age twelve, and I think at like age sixteen she's taken in by a slightly like wealthy, well to do person that she's known for a while. And she just goes on and on about how that woman just did it out of charity. Oh, she's she's just doing this out of charity, taking in the orphans so she can show me off to all of her wealthy friends, but I'm going to take advantage of it. She's paying my rent. Why not take that money? It's like, okay. Let me interject because this is where I was like, okay, I have anxiety pretty bad. I have gravitated towards other people with mental health issues, anxiety, depression, I have met a lot of people who have this, we'll charitably call it, sense of humor, where they can only cut things down. They can never prop anything up. They can never give anyone the benefit of the doubt. They always have to see the bad. And it's a self-defense mechanism to keep yourself from being vulnerable and getting your feelings hurt. I can't let myself get attached to this lady as a maternal figure because she's just doing it out of charity. She doesn't really care about me. And that's just a way of keeping yourself from getting hurt again. And I could easily see that being what Grace is doing because Grace does not want to admit the role that the trauma of losing her mom has played in her life. And she doesn't want to get help for that, she she just wants to try to deal with it by lashing out. Because, yeah, if you were a well-adjusted person, you would be like, okay, she's doing it out of charity. That's better than not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, you gave to charity. You did it to make yourself feel good. That's better than, I guess, not doing it or, say, killing a bunch of innocent people to make yourself feel good. But we're supposed to look down on this person or are we i don't know know. is it like the satire yeah i don't know i don't know yeah i i I, like it seemed to me right up until we get into uh grace she she gets taken in by this wealthy family because she's best friends with their son jimmy and there's a through line through the book that grace genuinely likes jimmy she is the only person or jimmy i'm sorry he is the only person she has anything nice to say about and even then she doesn't really let herself go there she just admits that like jimmy could hurt me because i care about jimmy and that's the highest compliment she can pay someone and there's like a will they won't they thing with jimmy yeah well and that that. made me (laughs) well that's where i started to think like now i really don't know if I'm supposed to like Grace. No. You can't because like Grace. There, if you write someone been... who is complete garbage, uh, maybe, just maybe, they should grow and change and be less garbage. That's what I was going to say. Or like, just there tell me come... that you want me to hate them because I do. There should come a point where... Grace gets rejected by Jimmy for the way she is or something. Some comeuppance. And she realizes, wow, maybe I'm the problem. Yeah, but the cute motive of how to kill your family is like, okay, well, she's... Jimmy seems like a pretty vanilla guy. Um, I do not think if he ever found out you committed all these murders, he would want to be with you. And I'll be real with you. Anyone who does want to be with you is a goddamn idiot. Something's wrong. (laughs) Because you're going to kill them one day. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're obviously going to kill me. <laughs> because that's the other thing. It's like I can't root for Grace. Again, we got a little off track in our in our funny summary, right? Just like the book where one of the quotes and you quoted it in your review. Christ, well, Christ I'm, I'm rambling, rambling. again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's sitting here in her prison cell. Wow, I, I just wrote 
10 pages on something that had nothing to do with me brutally murdering my family members. I used, I used all my all my law library time looking up the Uncanny Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, first murders, her grandparents. She goes to Monaco because I guess that's an easy thing to do over there. It seems like it might be pricey, but... You know, I don't know. They're they're closer. I thought she went to the. I thought she went to Spain. Oh, she went to Spain first. You're right. That was in Spain. All right. So she just hops on over <laughs> to Spain. That one's probably not too difficult. No. And she tracks down her racist grandparents. They're racist because they live in Spain and they never learn Spanish, and they're foreigners who are just there to complain about things. Aren't old people the worst? There was a Persian guy who I'm still calling Persian, even though they don't like being called Persia. Britain, it took you until the 80s to start calling them Iran. Get it right. It's not complicated. So he's a jerk because he's offering her a car, and he probably wants to sleep with her, but never, like, makes a move on her or... Well, no, or no, no, he no. does, this is, but she rejects does. him, and he's like, okay, cool, you'd still have the car, though. Yeah. Yeah. All this guy does to her is ask for her phone number, and she won't give it to him, because anyone who wants to have sex with her is an asshole, which, I mean, be fair. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree with you on that one, that's, but not for the reason that's the energy you you're, think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the energy you're putting out into the world, Grace. I, I don't. She has this whole like thing, too. Like One of her repeated points is that no man likes a beautiful woman who knows she's beautiful. And it's like, maybe. I mean, maybe you get that a lot. I don't know. I, I'm sure a lot of guys come up to girls and say a lot of stupid things. But in general, I think what you might be misreading as, as men not liking a beautiful woman who knows she's beautiful is... Men realizing you're you're just going to reject and hate them, and that you've been making fun of them behind their back this entire time. <laughs> so they do they don't bother, or and the only ones who do are the ones who are oblivious to what you're saying about them and the looks you're giving them. Maybe except this guy, she paints him out as some guy who just likes uh, a party. He's super wealthy. She, uh, in her most non-racist moment, assumes that he makes his money illegally Ooh. because how else could he Ooh. a man who speaks less intelligently than she does and flashes cash and and is he could be a youtuber for all we know he could be mr beast <laughs> and, and he's like just walking around and she's like ah she just assumes he gets his money from some illegal business he probably sells drugs and it's like yeah grace that's a real not racist assumption there Okay. Apple didn't fall um, far from that tree, did it, huh? No, 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 no. And so he gives her a car, and it's okay. She's she's planning to destroy the car and possibly implicate him in a murder, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Because he had the unmitigated gall to ask her out, handle rejection with dignity, and still lend her a giant <laughs> car. What a piece of shit, am I right? I know. I don't even know how they let people like that walk the streets. <laughs> yeah, and then and then she wears a wig, she goes to a restaurant, and she overhears them talking about stuff, and it doesn't have any purpose because she kills them on the way home. She takes that big truck, waits for her grandparents to pass by on a lonely road overlooking like a deep gorge or something, and she floors it to ram into them, and instead of hitting them, they... Swerve, I guess, right? Yeah, they swerve. She doesn't hit them. That's how she gets away with it. She, they swerve with their really great old person reflexes. I'm just being petty on that one. And off into the gorge they go. Grandma gets decapitated by a tree branch. <laughs> Granddad <laughs> is pretty fucked up, but he's just conscious enough for Grace to go over and brag about how she's going to murder both of his sons and his granddaughter, and his daughter-in-law, and grandson. That's the murder where I stopped giving the book the benefit of the doubt. And it's the second one. I count yeah, this. I count I these two as one, basically. I mean, she does it at the same time. There's a lot of fluff between there and now, but we're, we've, already, we've already been recording for a while, so let's just jump right into part two, 
Andrew. The Frogman. He cut ties with the family. He's her cousin. So dad's brother's son. And Andrew didn't like the, the lifestyle or his dad or the money. Didn't want to position the company. So he decided he was going to study frogs. He was going to do a, a nature thing. Great stuff. But that son of a bitch at any time, he could just go back to the family. If he's tired of slumming it with these gross frogs, he could just accept a small position in like the mail room or something. And then he's back in and they've got him and they'll they'll just push him up the hierarchy in the corporation and he'll accept their money and he'll just be a rich asshole so he's gotta die. <sighs> mm -hmm. Sorry, I shouldn't say it like she actually had passion. I mean, she did say like, well, he's actually a pretty nice guy, and he fell out with the family, but I'm going to kill him anyway. He's going to die. Yeah, I need the money. Yeah, as it turns out, she wants that Artemis money. She hates rich people, but she's okay with having all of their money and turning into them. Oh, she hates rich people, but she loved living with those rich people. And she has expensive tastes. Yes. And I'm like... <laughs> Imagine if John McClane was a, a terrorist, right? <laughs> Who do you root for here? I <sighs> John McClane plans on holding all of Nakatomi hostage, but Hans Gruber beats him to it. Who do we root for? <laughs> it's it's like if the Joker blew up a hospital, right? But Grace killed somebody. But then you tell me I have to spend an hour with one of these two people. It's like, I know the Joker's worse. But he's also more interesting. I, can, I cannot <laughs> listen to Grace for an hour. <laughs> being inside Grace's head is so much worse than being murdered by Grace. Yeah. So she seduces her cousin, the Frogman, and she gets him high and pushes him into a pond and drowns and him. And she puts uh, the experimental frog juice on him, and he's so high... He can't respond. His muscles are so lax, he has drowned. And then she disappears after that. And we explained it pretty quickly. It is a very, very long trek to killing this guy, who, again, has done nothing wrong to her and does not deserve to die at all. No, and she repeatedly makes fun of him for being a hippie and for caring about frogs and for... Yeah, how dare he know. have passion? <laughs> fucking dick well but previously she had made fun of her father's company for like bulldozing the environment or whatever she's insufferable how did there's so many like and, and every murder the murders are an afterthought yeah. this book was an excuse it, like i said it's literally i think the idea behind the book was i have a lot of snarky sarcastic comments about upper class and lower class British society. And I think people would really have fun if I told them all of my snarky comments. And that was a miscalculation. <laughs> but she's like, I'll wrap it up in this fun, dark comedy. And like, I got to murder people. So um, I'm going to make them swerve off the road. I... There's a lot I gotta of, get away with it, so... There's a lot of coincidences that needed to fall into place for <laughs> that to happen Yeah. that I couldn't possibly have known about, but okay. And then the frog venom thing, it's like, okay, she has no idea what the frog sin does. But and she knows that if she gonna... fortifies enough wine and just gets him drunk and high, she can drown him. Yeah, when you use toad... But how does she know what the frog toxin is going to do to it? I think he how tells does she know her. It's, he tells her it gets you high and he's playing with the dose. Do you know how many people I know who have said that exact sentence to me? <laughs> I, it wouldn't make me think that I, I could, could kill them. them. Yes. <laughs> 
Here's I have never known anybody so high, and I have seen some high people in my life. Yeah. I have never seen anybody so high that they would drown in a puddle they could just stand up in. Or just sit up in. <laughs> <laughs> she drowns in like two feet of it's water. Not, yeah, it's not very much water. Thank God that you can't have muddy tracks that make it look like you were in fact pushed into said water. Yeah, I, th- th- I guess if the frog toxin literally paralyzes your muscles, which, like, I-, I guess it could. And then she also talks about what assholes all the people are who like to hang out at the frog place. Yeah. And they're just hanging They're just hanging out at a frog place. They're just chilling. Yeah, these people who took her in and did nothing to her are assholes. It's like, how do you hang out with these people for months and... All you take away from that experience is, wow, those people were just as shitty asshole as they were when well, I met them several months I'll ago. I'll do you one. I'll do you one better and and say, I promised I wouldn't be Detective Ben, but like, how do you hang out with these people for months and then one of them dies and you mysteriously vanish? And no one starts like pointing fingers. Mentioned, <laughs> yeah, you both mentioned you had a date that night, and yeah, again, the murders aren't the point. The cutting observations are. Point. So, so next she's going to kill Andrew's father, who is a sex pervert. And so she starts frequencing sex perverty places. Why wouldn't you name that guy Andrew? <laughs> the sex pervert should have been named Andrew. Yeah, the sex pervert. She's, she's going to a sex dungeon. Oh, don't give me that look. I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> it's not that I don't like sex. I like sex. I'm good at sex. I'm very good at sex. But <laughs> with, you know, with, with my boyfriend like to... from Canada. <laughs> it's just that I don't like to have sex at sex parties because I'm not a tacky, tacky sex person who 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 has sex at tacky sex parties. I have sex at the fanciest <laughs> sex parties. <laughs> Only the fanciest of sex parties. Oh. I would never. I would never. Oh god, she says something like this. She goes off on this whole spiel about how she's not a prude. She's very sex positive. Yeah. She only she she likes to use men for sex and then make sure they're out in the morning uh, because she doesn't want anybody clinging around or harsh in her vibe because she's a strong, independent woman who likes and does not like sex and thinks sex is good and not good and Thinks There's the people no who, point. Who, <laughs> All edge and people, no point. Pizza cutter. <laughs> she thinks the people who, who like to have sex too much are, are not good, <laughs> but people who like to have sex not enough are prudes. And you have to have sex she, the exact amount of times that I want it. Yeah. And like the best sex she ever had was with her stepbrother, and I'm not making No, it <laughs> we might as well bring that up. Yes. Her her love interest is, in fact, the son of the woman who adopted her, a.k.a. her stepbrother. And I get that they knew each other before she was adopted, but if I were ever dating someone and I found out that I could conceivably call her parents mom and dad, I'm breaking that off. That's done. <laughs> we're not. Well, we're certainly not... not going to sleep with each other anymore. Look, I don't know if this is like a British thing or what, but like she seduces her cousin, her stepbrother, her uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I know there's like this empowering thing about using your sexuality as a weapon, but like maybe you shouldn't be using your sexuality in a we- as a weapon in a book called How to Kill Your Family. You know? <laughs> Uh, it was a thought that kept coming up grace's Uh, last name is actually lannister (laughs) (laughs) yeah they were british or something oh yeah so her her stepbrother is her love interest anyway she seduces her uncle and after a lot of talking and talking and learning how to tie specific knots She convinces him to go to an out-of-the-way club that she scouted out earlier, and she knows this room that's in the back that no one will disturb them, and she figured out this knot that looks like another knot, but this knot will kill him if she applies it, and then she's going to get him in the room, and he finally shows up, and they get and they start doing the kinky, kinky stuff, right? And then uh, she kills in the end. That's how it goes. 
That's that's it. He's dead. Yeah, and it's and not like she needed fine. a special knot to kill him. She just sort of hooks him up to like a nurse and has him start. You know, is is it too soon to make a uh, David Carradine joke? She David Carradines him, and like you could just do that with a belt. You don't need to learn a special. Nah, knot. you need a special knot, man. You tie it in a Well, it, it, again, way. it's because like the essay is due tomorrow, and I need twenty thousand more words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We so need. She's got to go on a quest. We need to add more <laughs> fat to this to this book. It's way too lean in its current original it's, form of twenty. Like, pages like right now, the the book is a kind of thin that some women would call strong, but it's mostly <laughs> just about their biceps and their booty. So. It's, <laughs> And we need to add some fat, but not too much fat because fat people are disgusting, and I hate fat yeah. people and thin people equally. You have to be exactly the right weight, and let me tell you, hang on, I'll get off the scale. The exact right weight is 115 pounds of lean muscle mass. Read this book on how to jog <laughs> to save <laughs> your mental health. Yeah, I kept wanting to call the main character Bella for some weird reason. I don't, I don't know why. I do think it's semi-autobiographical, but my question is how aware is she that these thoughts are ugly thoughts? Yeah. I don't know. And I can we'll we'll keep coming back to that, so let's move on. Yeah. Here's a here's a review I'm reading. Uh groups that this hideous main character hates. Fat people, women, bonus points for plastic surgery. Asian people, old people, people with dementia, gay people, people with eating disorders, mentally ill people, people who like frogs, rich people, also poor people, teenagers, people who struggle with addiction, stupid people, middle-aged women, people who take baths, pansexual people, people with chronic illnesses, people who care about social issues, influencers of any kind, her mom, One Direction, the reader. <laughs> She does directly criticize the reader. <laughs> That's not a joke. She's like anybody who reads my book would probably this would probably fly off the shelves. You stupid motherfuckers! And it's like you're right. I bought it twice. I, I listened to this on Audible and I got it on my Kindle. So uh, you got me, Bella. Here's another uh, five bucks to add to your vast uh, inherited fortune. That's another one dead, and she's contemplating killing Andrew's mother as well, but Andrew's mother gives a speech at Andrew's father, the sex pervert's funeral, and she's like, he was, he was, a, he was not a great man, I don't know why we're all pretending he's a great man, kind of sucked. Didn't even care that he our son died. He already died in a sex dungeon, right? Yeah, yeah, he died in a sex dungeon, didn't care that our son was dead, and then she's she cries softly and is taken out gently by one of the one of the other people at the funeral. By the guy she's moved on to. Yeah, I, I figured that's who that was. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't know for sure, but I was like, she's she's dating him now, right? They, they almost kiss or something, right? I think so. Like they, I, yeah, I, I, whatever. And I don't Grace care. is My like, point is... she just saved her life. You were planning on killing her? What the fuck did yeah. she do? <laughs> she married into this family and that's why she's like the well, same same as my mom my mom married it my mom was harmed by this family i don't want to go after women that are like my mom that would mean a lot if you didn't kill the next woman i was yeah i was family. about to say the next woman she kills is arguably the most brutal of her murders not arguably it is the most brutal <laughs> she cooks her yes Good God! So let's just, let's do that after committing sex crimes <laughs> to hire a hacker. Let, let's talk about that, and then we can talk about the crime that she is in jail for, and then immediately resolve that. How's that sound? We're we're All doing right. this out of order, but fuck it. So did the book. Yeah, so did the book. So this is the right order. The woman who married her father. That bitch. Who had the audacity to marry into this family, just like the last person who she wasn't going to kill. And just like her mom was kind of, like, she didn't marry into the family, but she was used by the family. I do think this this lady had some say in the dad not accepting 
I wanted to say Bella. <laughs> uh, Grace. <laughs> um, I don't know why you wanted to say Bella. That's weird. Yeah. But I, I do think she was more responsible. Like, she was like, you better not bring that kid into my house. Which, again, I don't know if that's an unreasonable stance for yeah. the woman who was cheated on to take. But Yeah. No. It's a little, I little would not, cruel. But I would not want someone else's cheated child in my house. I would feel yeah, really this weird like a Brady about Brady Bunch that. situation. Yeah. <laughs> First, Bella is like, how am I going to kill her? She goes to Monaco for an extended period of time. I don't know how expensive that is, but it can't be cheap. So good for her for being able to go to Monaco for an extended period of time. It's not what normal people can typically do. I don't fully understand where Grace gets her money. She talks about what she does for a living in the beginning, but she makes it seem like she has since quit that job. Right, she works for her father's company, and then I think she moved on. Oh no, she mentions she gets hired by like another fashion-y average. She gets hired by Vogue. Huh, interesting that she was hired yeah. by British Vogue, huh? Hmm. I mean, she doesn't literally get hired by British Vogue, but she goes to like some other... Her dad owns this like, I, I don't know, like some kind of girl clothing store. I don't know any girl clothing stores, so I'm going to say The Gap. <laughs> okay. So, okay, that's that's her job, and apparently it allows her to go to Monaco for an extended period of time. Good for her. While she's in Monaco, she finds where her... I'm just going to call her her stepmom, even though she technically isn't. That's bit, that close enough, right? Her father's wife. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm not gonna say that because it's, it's too much work. Ben. Simplify, stepmom. Even though she actually isn't, so finds out that stepmom and dad not really living with each other anymore. Probably don't even like each other. But she's still gotta die. Die, die. Everybody die. So she finds where she lives in Monaco. Finds out that she's got a super smart house. She poses as a reporter to talk to the maid to get an in. And she then talks to us in extended detail about what an Alexa is. How a smart, what a smart house is. How we're fools if we're going to automate our houses and make smart houses. Because those could be turned against you. And this is a super advanced smart house. And she's going to get in there and she's going to kill this woman. But first she needs to find a hacker, so she's going to have to pretend to be a teenage girl so that she could lure in a teenage boy who will constantly send her dick pics, which is child pornography over here. I don't know what it's like over there. Well, she, she, and uses she, that she as blackmail. Save. Yes, she will use that <laughs> as blackmail. And then she gets an in, gets access to the security, lures the mother into a sauna. The mother has a heart condition she locks the sauna, turns it on full blast, and literally cooks her to death. While taunting While her taunting over, her. Th- over the speaker. Yeah. 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 But remember, she's not going to kill someone who is lured in by this awful family. Or someone who has rejected the family for being awful and agrees with everything she has to say. Yeah. If they're in line for the will. Yeah. Yeah. She will kill those people. If, if they might get that sweet, sweet will money, uh, you gotta go. Like, you're not supposed to like Grace, but maybe you're supposed to like Grace. Well, I don't. She's a fucking but garbage She's like the person. Joker. Like, like you're, she's an anti She's a garbage person. Not a hero at all. She's a villain. She compares herself to Norman Bates once, and it, but, like, I think it's, she, she constantly talks about how she's not psychotic, how she's smart and Smarter she kills for everyone reason else. and her her killings are justice and except andrew who was just for the money and um but she's like an anti-hero that you're not supposed to like what she does but there's something compelling about her and it's probably her sense of humor well, it's okay to be wrong, Ben. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about the murder that she didn't commit that is the reason she's in jail. Stepbrother <laughs> Jim. Jim 
<laughs> has hooked up with a fake redhead. Do you get the partner hub thing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So What are you doing? You're my stepbrother. <laughs> <laughs> That's illegal in these fifty or however many kingdoms there are. <laughs> so God damn it. So stepbrother <laughs> you're, you're stepbrother fake. hooks up with fake redhead. And fake redhead <laughs> Gosh, she she has fake red hair. You can't trust people with fake red hair. She's a fucking dick. I hate her so much. I'm definitely not jealous. I would never be jealous. Could I be jealous? Uh, maybe a little jealous. I often fantasize about my stepbrother, but that's weird, okay? Anyway, he's going to marry her. And You know what's weirder is that you can't trust her because she's a fake redhead, but not because she's a lawyer? She wants a normal, boring life. With a normal, boring man like Jim. And Jim is, uh, he's a simp. Boring. He's a simp. He's <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy named Jim. That's his defining characteristic. <laughs> I assume he's attractive. He has... He looks into the camera job. with a with a funny face on. He's Jim. On their engagement party i don't even remember i don't care ben i don't fucking care she she finally has a talk with this fake redhead who is a fake redhead and thus cannot be trusted and she may have had work done and she doesn't wear a bra ben and i can't believe that she doesn't wear a bra she did that on purpose wait 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 hang on never have to i remember this okay there are there are four separate instances in the book of someone not needing a bra. Uh, Cause at this point you're like, th- you're like 75% through the book and it's just a grinding slog on everyone. And then she's like, posh girls don't need bras. And I'm just like, stop, find somebody you like, please preferably not related <laughs> to you. And, like, no go camera. hang out with them for a day <laughs> and write about them, please. Fuck. We don't even know why she likes Jim. Because he's boring. And because they're related. She also hates boring people. He's got like, just enough of like that quirky in energy. And because they're related. They shared, they oh, shared a sex scene when they both turned 18 or whatever. Just one yeah, night, yeah, oh, yeah, but it was shit. a great night, Ben. <laughs> and she was a little... She kind of... She wanted him to not be there in the morning, and he wasn't. But she kind of wanted him to still be around. I, I want a funny quote I just saw. The flat fills up. Booze is consumed until the only bottles left are the kinds of Chardonnays you find in Tesco, which I understand is some sort of British Walmart. So I switched to vodka. By 1 a.m., I can tell that most of the people there are still high. I've never taken drugs, except for frog venom in the previous chapter. Drugs are a class... Or she's never taken drugs because of her classic need to stay in, in control. She's just been drinking constantly all night <laughs> and throughout the rest of the book. I've got to stay in control, so I only drink vodka and fortified wine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I hate totally people who take fun. drugs, but I hate people who don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> I had to switch to vodka because the wine became too middle class for my tastes. <laughs> oh, I, I fucking hate this, Ben. <laughs> She's just so funny. Is that what that is? Isn't that a funny, is that what, isn't is that that a funny remark? Don't... <laughs> Don't you know when the party is down to only the wines you could buy in Tesco? Yeah. Can't we all relate to we that? We can all relate to when we're drinking middle class or poor people wine, right? Everyone here woman has a father who worked at the never... Guardian as chief editor in chief, right? Yeah. That's not just yeah, me. This woman is like 100% on Jamie Oliver's quest to destroy chicken nuggets. <laughs> Because it's another poor people British person food. I don't like. <laughs> Man, it just makes you want to like like revolution again. <laughs> <laughs> I 
We're already it, independent, you know, but we want to be more independent. <laughs> I, I just want to have less to do with you. <laughs> uh, we're too close. Can we get a different language? Can we get a different language between us? Like, uh... All right. So where the fuck are we? Okay, so... Oh, yeah, fake redhead. So she and fake redhead start exchanging barbs. And then fake redhead leans a little bit over the balcony and falls to her death. And Jim comes out and is like, What did you do? And it may have hurt Grace just a little bit to hear that he thought that she did that. And then she went to jail. And Ben, let's resolve that real quick. So she's in jail this entire time. And then her lawyer, who is her second lawyer, because she lost the trial and now they're on appeal, her new lawyer is like, hey, they found a camera on a different flat and it shows an angle where you clearly didn't push her off. So tension resolved and they high five. <laughs> we'll have you out by now. Yeah, yeah. They do high five. Yeah. I think they do oh high five. Oh my God, I was joking, Ben. <laughs> They're like, all right, tension resolved. I guess, I guess that's that. Oh, her name was Caro. The hell kind of name is Caro? I thought of Caro, the brand for corn syrup. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot her name. Uh, again, my notes are somewhere else. I don't have them on me. I'm not very professional, but neither is this book. So, All right. So we've resolved all that tension. And also she kills her sister, who is an influencer. Her sister sucks. Just Wait, I'm sorry. Her cellmate's name is Kelly McIntosh. <laughs> ben. Ben, we're going to be here too long. <laughs> we got to go. <laughs> so she finds out that her sister has an allergy. She puts the allergen in some makeup and sends it to her. So she'll do an Instagram thing. And then she died from allergies. And uh, then she ended up going to jail. We just resolved that. She got out of jail. And then she's like, well, I told you I murdered six people. That means I didn't kill my dad. And I can't get close to him. Because he's beefed up his security. So I suck the end. No, and she can't get close to him because he's dead. While she was in jail, he's dead. Oh yeah, he just died randomly, Ben. He died in an accident, that's right. Died in a boating accident. Yeah, wow. Well, anyway, final thoughts, Ben. Wait, wait, hold on. It is I, your secret half-brother. <laughs> I am writing you to tell you that while you were in jail, I got into a fight with our father on a boat, and I killed him. Also, I was present at all your murders. Do you remember that guy? Yeah, except for the grandparents. Sorry about that one. I, I didn't know you were alive back then. But do you remember that guy who asked for a lighter, who you criticized for being a guy who asked for a lighter? <laughs> like some kind of asshole? <laughs> that was me. Do you remember the guy in the sex dungeon who wore a mask that you criticized for wearing a mask and having hands? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was there for a third thing as well, but I'll be real with you, it's kind of hazy. Because at this point, I was listening to the book on 2.5 times speed, and I needed it to be done. But, but so here's our here's my entire relationship with our dad, because I know you were wondering. So, like, I'm pretty, like... You and I had different lives. Like my, your dad, like our dad knocked up my mom who was uh, actually also posh and she married some guy who's like old money, all about the class. He doesn't like this Donald Trump or that guy with the hair, Boris Johnson. He didn't, he didn't act like that. He's, he, was a, he was a proper English gentleman. So like, that's what I am. I'm that kind of person. And so while I was out gentlemaning one day, I ran out of money <laughs> and I needed some money. So I went and, and I asked our dad for money and he thought that was neat. And so then he started making me go to soccer games, sorry, football games. And um, <laughs> this is not an like, exaggeration. This is true. It got, it got so annoying to always have to go to these football games with our dad that I was like, you know what? I'm done with you, man. But then he was all like, I think somebody's trying to kill me and I'm going to give you half a million pounds to 
come to this place with me. And I think his business was going down the drain. So there was, was some like, big scandal on the business. horizon. Yeah. Yeah. So he was supposed so to was get like, out of town for a bit. But, he hires his son on board after the grandparents. I can't say no to five. I'm telling you, I'm your half brother. I'm telling you. Let me tell you my story. And so he hired me onto his boat. And so I go on his boat, and then he called my mom a whore. And so uh, I bashed his skull in and threw him off the <laughs> threw him off the edge of the boat. I know you'd have been so proud of me, Grace. I really like you, Grace. You and I, simpatico, man. Like we're definitely siblings, but. BT dubs, I don't want anything to do with you, and I'm going to be inheriting all this money, and you're not going to be coming after it, because here's why. I have been paying your annoying cellmate to spy on you. <gasps> it turns out she wasn't a I, total idiot. <laughs> I know. I know that like a moron, <laughs> you have been writing down a detailed account of all your crimes. <laughs> By the way, I find your barbs both cutting and witty. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I had... Uh, Kelly McIntosh take pictures of all of the pages. Which was, you know, a lot. Like, I, I don't know how you thought people weren't going to notice them in that sock. Like, that sock was full of 340 <laughs> typed pages. Of you just making, like, meticulously remembering everyone who had ever wronged you or come across you. And what they were wearing that day. And then... Uh, so she took pictures of all that, and she sent them to me, and I've got them, and I sent lawyers instructions that if anything happens to me, it wasn't an accident, and to publish this book. So, you're leaving my money alone, or you're going to jail again. And this time it don't won't worry, be resolved off-screen, asshole. <laughs> and don't worry, I paid Kelly off, so she probably won't bother you anymore. Then, by the way, love, this is Kelly. I got a piece of evidence on you and you're going to pay me or I'm going to uh, turn you in because I'm Kelly, the professional blackmailer who you thought was stupid this whole time. And uh, fuck you, Grace. And that's the end of the book. <laughs> hey, he does say you should maybe open up to Jimmy or whatever. And, you know, people do like you, Grace, if you let them be close, but which is not true. People do not like you, Grace. No, you God, are a no, garbage no, 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 person. Grace. Hide your real personality <laughs> at all costs. Grace, you are a woman who hates everyone and everything, and you have murdered five people who were basically innocent and failed to murder the one person who actually did anything. And Six people. Yeah, just never tell, <laughs> never tell anyone that. Yeah, zero out of fucking ten. Bye, everyone. Okay, uh, so... What is it trying to be, Ben? That's what we've been trying to ask and answer this entire time. Like, yeah. like, what is... Is there a message? Because I thought there was a strong feminist message that was really undermined, so I don't think that's the case anymore. But even this guy, her, her surprise half-brother, was like, Grace, I just had better cards than you. And... <laughs> Grace even mentions on more than one occasion, I know that that this makes me a hypocrite, but, like, I want it anyway. I want this money anyway. So, gimme, gimme. Okay, so, Grace is supposed to be an anti-hero, I think. And Failed. I think you're supposed to care about what happens to her. And I think this book is setting up a sequel of Please don't. Grace versus her brother please don't they're both supposed to be these kind of like mastermind geniuses who are going to go go at each other yeah. or maybe they're going to team up and take on kelly the blackmailer i don't know i don't care what a what a great mastermind genius he follows so here are the things that are set <laughs> here are the things that are set up in the book uh set up in the book she's going to kill her dad she doesn't kill her dad set up in the book she's going to get with jim she's not with jim at the end set up in the book she didn't commit the murder that's resolved off screen None of the things that are set up pay off. It's it's all undercut. 
it's it's a really uh, bad way to write a book. It, it does almost everything about fiction writing wrong. Okay, I have to insert some of the research that I did almost immediately after recording this episode. Number one, Bella Mackey sold this book based off of one chapter because she didn't want to write a book if she wasn't going to be able to sell it. So it's not really about the art. It's filled with fluff. It's very much supposed to be like witty and experiential. And I really do think the impetus for this book, the inspiration is she wants to, as the British say, take the piss out of uh, British society. I think Bella, Bella, whatever her name is, Mackey, Bella Mackey has spent a lot of time moving through British society. Uh, it's pretty apparent she spends a lot of time moving through the upper tiers of yep, British society. I, I thought about that every time she took shots at the rich. I'm like, well, you kind of mm-hmm. are one. I don't think you well, actually have a grasp on what the average <laughs> person's life is like. More research after the fact is that Bella Mackey mentioned in that same interview that she is a middle-class woman. Her net worth, I couldn't really track down. I saw some reports that about half a million pounds. Her husband is worth about a million pounds. That ain't middle class. That's not super rich, but it's definitely not middle class. Now, she's not the first person to do that, but I just wanted to get a general mindset on how she might view society. Again, I don't know her personally. Take all that with a grain of salt. Not in the least. It's like when Congress people say middle class wages are, what was it, like $300,000 a year? It's like, wow, you (laughs) are way off base on what it is to be middle class. It's a banana, Michael. What could it cost? $10? Yeah, okay. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's what it is. These are people who have not grocery shopped in 20 years. I thought we were drinking Captain Morgan's, but it was Sailor Jerry's. (laughs) (laughs) Anywho, anywho. I think the charitable the charitable interpretation I have of this is that grace is meant to be a kind of like snarky, sarcastic uh, taking down of, of classist Britain. And I think she represents a side of Bella Mackey. I don't think she is Bella Mackey herself. I don't know anything about Bella Mackey, but... If Bella Mackey has gone to therapy, she is already very different from Grace because Grace thinks she is smarter than God. Bella Mackey is probably making a sequel or wanted a sequel and that there's probably more to this story. And so that's part of the reason it's just so bad because we expected it to be one book. There's no indication that it's like part one of two and it doesn't pay anything off. So that's one one side of the badness. The other side of the badness is it's padded to shit. Yeah. I, 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 there's, like, I think Bella Mackey has a strong command of the English language. I'm sure her Vogue articles are very good. Her jogging book, as I understand, is also very padded. But people have said like the, the main points are good. There is a certain flow to her writing. Some of these things taken in isolation, like some of these criticisms, especially when it's punching up, at like the wealthy it's very good it could be very good but when it punches down as often as it punches up it starts to piss you off unless you're a person who is like grace and i have known many she's not a very good fiction writer this is not a good novel this is a disaster as a novel this would have made a moderately entertaining novella or short story. Yes, where you trim all the fat and you let me know what is your point. This is what, 350, 400 pages? You could trim that down to a nice 100 and get a solid novella. 
it, it's got to there. There is an element of like taking someone down a peg. You always want to punch up. You, you you don't want to just hate everything all the time. That's miserable. And that's what this is. This it's miserable. This grace stands on a a pedestal, looking down upon the world, and we're. I don't know if we're supposed to think that's cool, but Grace sure as shit thinks it's cool. And unfortunately, intentional or not, if you write a, a novel that places the reader in the head of an insufferable, miserable person, then the experience is just misery. <laughs> I, I would not... I. Dude, I came so close. You told me there was a twist at the end, so I had to get to it because I knew that was going to be a big part of our analysis. I, I, this was the first one I almost tapped out of. <laughs> wow. Not since Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants have I had so hard a time. And unlike Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, that's not just because this isn't for me. This is not for anyone. Even the people who enjoy it, like, you should probably not be indulging that side of you. Again, it it's... I hate rich people, but I have rich tastes. I want all that money. I, I hate people who have advantages, but I have advantages. I recognize that. And I recognize I'm a hypocrite, but I still want these advantages anyway. I mean, at I, I wondered if she had a thing where it was like, I hate that men have it so much easier in society, but like as a rich woman, you have it easier than most people, including men. You thought that the half-brother at the end was like one more man taking something away from Grace. Yes. You thought that was a shot at men. Yeah. I thought that was a last ditch effort to give Grace some comeuppance. I thought by introducing a character that was exactly like her <laughs> at the end, who who swept the rug out from under her, that was some attempt at not letting Grace win because Grace can't win. Well, the fact that we don't know is kind of a, a problem, right? When you, when you finish a book and go, what the fuck was that? What the fuck did I just read and why? You have a problem. Oh, it's a f- total <laughs> failure. It's, it's well, like you, absolutely a failure. You know it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. The reason it's always sunny in Philadelphia works is because the gang can never they win. They always lose because they're horrible garbage people. And I yes. know, A, they're funny... But most of the time, you're laughing at them. Yes. You're laughing at them, and and then you see how bad it gets, and at the end, there's some (laughs) catharsis because they do not win and get everything they ever dreamed of. Yeah, like, that to me is the example I always give of how to write an unlikable character in a comedy. You have to clearly communicate to the audience that you know that this guy is not the best. And should I care about this person or not? Because I don't. I don't like her. I don't know if that was intentional, though. I really don't. And I'm glad I wasn't the only one. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me look at these genres real quick, Ben. Let's do All it. All right. Fiction. I guess it technically is, yes, fiction. It is, it is not not Yeah, there you go. Thriller. No, it's not a thriller. I, I was not thrilled. I already know you get away with the murder scot-free. There's no tension. There's no tension for the people who are being killed either because you know they have no chance of getting away. Yeah, I, I know that you successfully have killed all of them and then that you got away with it. Contemporary. I guess, yeah, that's another one that gets a pass, right? Painfully so. Yeah. <laughs> Crime. I'm going to say no. Crime books, according, I mean, it's a very broad term, but that focuses on the court system and criminals, and it's usually, like, investigating and sleuthing. All the investigation happened off-screen. The court system stuff happened off-screen. She did commit a series of crimes, but as I described (laughs) in my review, 
she describes these crimes with the intensity of someone telling you about the Mountain Dew flavors that they just tried. M- mystery. There is no mystery. What are you talking about? We're not trying to solve anything. The mystery part of... There, there is none. We knew all along that fake redhead K- Caro? That Caro, Caro fell off the balcony. I, uh, the mystery, Nathaniel, is what the fuck is this book? <laughs> well, it's not a mystery I book. Was, <laughs> I was certainly trying to solve a mystery while I was reading this. Mystery thriller. No and also no. You combine two things together and you're wrong. Audiobook. Is generational wealth a genre? <laughs> Oh, it should be. And this would fall under that. Audiobook. <laughs> audiobook, though. It, it, Pain, there is an painfully audiobook. so. It's, they they it picked hurts. the right uh, voice actor. Yeah, it hurts they, to they, listen to that voice actor. She nails Grace. And, oh, God. Does that... <laughs> is that sad or, I have, or what? I You know, people are like, oh, audiobooks are so much easier to listen to. And I was like, this is an audiobook that made me buy the book. <laughs> I was like, I can't listen to this anymore. I cannot listen to this person. I had it up to 2.5 times speed. And I was like, nope. Can still hear the smugness in her voice. I have to go away. <laughs> I cannot keep doing this. Then there's adult... Uh, which is fiction for adults. It's not appropriate for children, so... Fair. Humor. Uh, Humor. No. <laughs> it tries. It tries. That's the most accurate of the genres so and, far. And then adult fiction, which is just like adult, except the fiction's at the end of it. Yeah. It's not young adult. I think that's what adult means. So I think we, we figured out this is a fiction, adult, adult fiction, contemporary audiobook. If it's a drama or a thriller, it's not very scary or tense. <laughs> I it's humor. I mean, it's comedy. Like I, some of these observations are funny, but the it, any humor that was legitimately in the book is just beaten out of you by the barrage of unfunny, just mean observations. Oh, so there's that. You want to you want to bust out that rubric, and then we can we can leave, and <laughs> and next week we can talk about something that's like enjoyable and that we liked is fun. The words about books grading rubric. It is available on our website at blog.wordsaboutbooks.ninja. If you would like to follow along with us, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. It's very long. Yeah. I put a, too much work into this. Yeah, you did. Say. Content and ideas, Ben. That is a I one. I gave it a one a as one, well. <laughs> a one is defined as the story is unfocused and or rambling. No central themes or plot points are developed. Everything that could be considered a plot point ends on a cliffhanger. I assume for a book two that you have no indication is coming. A one is one point. One point out of a hundred. Organization. I gave it a uh, two. Okay, you might explain yourself. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I gave this a one. No organizational <laughs> structures present. Plot points are disconnected in a way that is not intentional. It is all over the place. We jump all around in time. Sometimes we're talking about her past when she was with her mom. Then we're talking about her stepbrother. Then we're talking about very recently with her stepbrother. Then we're going back to the past. We're back in the present. We're talking about the murders. We're in jail. It's not great. I feel I should also justify that score by saying the framework does not support the organization. This is someone writing her memoir in prison. And instead of talking about how she killed her family... She's adding in all this needless filler in her prison memoir. All right, so I gave it a two. Two is organizational structure is present but ineffective. Narrative is confusing and hard to follow in a way that does not feel intentional. Pacing is either much too fast or much too slow. So I feel that there is an organizational structure that is present. Some attempt was made. The attempt that was made is 
the framing device of her sitting in prison writing this out and the uh, chapters where she describes the murders. I think that's an attempt at an organizational structure, but like you said, then she just starts jumping all around in time. And that is ineffective and confusing in a way that she probably did not intend to be ineffective and confusing. She just realized that a bunch of these things were happening at about the same time or that like I, it's been a long time since I talked about the Jimmy thread. I got to talk about the Jimmy thread and yeah, it, it's a mess, but I think she tried. So I, I was like two, but I see your argument. Basically, if this isn't a one, then the only thing that could be a one is like somebody just not using paragraphs or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying, but like, I still think there was some attempt. There was a framing device and a story. And so I'm like, okay, you tried. An attempt was made. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. All right. Use of language. This is this probably where we're going to. This is where we're going to differ a lot. I gave this a four. So the language is engaging and adds flavor to the characters in the world. The language creates an atmosphere of the book. I gave it a three. Average. I think the language is the only interesting thing about this book. I do think that Bella Mackey has a strong command of the English language. I think for certain kinds of writing, she is a competent writer. Not novel-length fiction by any stretch. <laughs> but the way she writes it is witty. It is cutting it is mean i mean it, somebody who who can't use language well and just is like fuck you that, that doesn't really get under your skin but yeah no bella Mackey has the language skills it takes to be like genuinely rude okay you know what i'm gonna say you convinced me because i don't want to give her a, like the lowest score ever and also that's <laughs> fair your argument that's fair. I'll give you that one. I guess I could say it was above average, which is a level three, typically. I want the lawyer in the next book to be named Ben. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't I'll want do anywhere near I would be. This. I would be fucking thrilled if she names a character after me. Even if it's just a guy she, like, steps on or something. That, that, would, that would be like, ha, gotcha. I I'd at least know you listened. All right. Personal <laughs> preference, Ben. Uh, one. one, I absolutely hated the absolutely book. Absolutely <laughs> hated. Oh, and I don't go into books thinking I'm gonna hate this. This is gonna, this is gonna suck. I was looking forward to this book. Recommendation strain. Same reason I do not recommend it anymore. <laughs> yep, I, level I, one. I, this book, I've been, I think, very charitable in saying that I think that this is somebody describing the dark side of their personality. The not-so-charitable interpretation is that Bella Mackey thinks this is funny. Like, I have kept pushing the satire angle because I hope and pray that's what this is. Because the other option is that this is not satire, that, that Bella Mackey thinks that Grace is a funny and charming smart pretty person and uh my god is that gross so ben how many points did did you end up with um let's see. i ended up with one. 19 points ben a one a one with... <laughs> a 15 and a one and a one uh let's see seven plus 15 22 24 I think this is probably one of the lowest books. I think it's. I think it ranked lower than Ready Player One. Probably not Ready Player Two because I know he did not do very well I, yeah. with use of language. So, uh, no. Yeah, this is this is easily in the bottom three though, and the other two are Ernest Bella Klein. Mackey... <laughs> <laughs> Bella Mackey could do better. Like it, it's unfortunate that she's lumped in with Ernest Klein. This novel sucks. I, I've i never seen something so mainstream, something that I would see like on a display table at Barnes & Noble, be so incompetent. Swing and a fucking miss. Swing and you accidentally let go of the bat and it beamed your teammate in the head and they're now, they're now going to the hospital with a serious concussion. 
really not since Ernest Klein have I come away from a book being like, this author needs to attend a writing seminar. <laughs> All right, let me get these shout outs out of the way so I can fuck off out of here. Check us out on Twitter for as long as that lasts, at WABpod. We're also on Instagram, which seems to be doing a lot better. That's at Words About Books Podcast. If you want to support the show, we have a Buy Me a Coffee, which is essentially a tip jar, or you can support us monthly for extra content and features on our Patreon. Shoutouts to our top tier members. In no particular order, there's Brad, a.k.a. Isakai Sama Sensei. Check out his podcast. That time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster. A man so smart that he defeated the deep blue computer in chess seven games to zero. We also have James of If You Want the Gravy fame. Check out his blog at ifyouwantthegravy.wordpress.com. A man so powerful and kind, he once saved an orphan from a well by pulling the entire well out of the ground with one arm and used the other arm to get the orphan out safely. If you support our show, you will get all sorts of extra bonus content. You'll get to vote on books that we read, hopefully not as bad as this one, and you'll get to join the bandwagon. And be amongst rock stars like Brad and James. Which will make you cooler by association. Keep that in mind. We'll see you next week for something we're actually going to enjoy reading and talking about for once. Thank God. Bye. I cannot stand another page of your mean, sarcastic bullshit.